All righty, Dreamers, thank you so much for calling in for our weekly Dreamers in Action team call. I'm super excited to have our guest speaker tonight. You guys are just going to be lit up. So if you don't have a piece of paper and pen in front of you, this is the time I would suggest you do it because I think note taking is so important so that you can remember all the genius and golden nuggets that are dropped on you tonight. Um, there's just a couple house cleaning items, announcements, things I want to cover. We're going to go through um, letting a few leaders kind of step out and share their stories, and then we'll get into the um, heart of our team call tonight. So I just, first of all, want to let you guys know that the Customer First program is officially rolled out. Um, I just got off the four-star and above leadership call that Kathy Cooper does monthly, and Corporate is aware of the glitches in the website. They were aware of some things that were changing. They're taking feedback from the field. So I just want you to know that anything you're like, what happened to the PDF? Or how come that's not working? Or how come these prices are that way? That they, it's just improving. It's just improving. It was the biggest initiative that we've done in the history of you know our 15 years as a company. So just be patient. Keep sharing your feedback. Keep posting an Icedronix business. But they're definitely cleaning things up. Same with the website. You know, I know a lot of people were like, what happened to the packs? How come there's only products there? The packs are coming back. You know, what's the way that a preferred customer can sign up their website? I think people were confused. If a customer, where was it? Because how did they get the coupons? If there wasn't a way to sign them up, all of the glitches have, you know, just kind of been kinked out or they're being kinked out. So just be patient with that. Um, some of the names of what was like customer, preferred customer or the retail option, those are being renamed to just simplify things. So just know our company has, you know, our best interests at heart. And even though with anything new, there's always just some things to tweak. It's going to be amazing and awesome. Just a little bit of recognition. Alex Sabat last week hit one star for the second time. Grab the second part of that bonus. Um, absolutely want to congratulate Megan, who I'm not sure is on our call yet. She hit the five cycle bonus, which is fabulous. And just some top enrollers. Oh, hi, Meg. <laughs> you know, Melanie was a top enroller. Haley was a top enroller. Jen and Adam, you guys, they are digging so deep into their team. They created, I mean, consultants, just second PT, third PT, fourth PT, fifth PT. I was out there and I was like, every time I opened up our page, they were creating a consultant. And I love just how deep they work in their team. And then just a huge shout out to everybody who made it to ICU New Jersey. I mean, Jen and Adam had just their thriving team there and people that gave up work on Friday made that commute. You know, Jen Neely flew from Denver. Uh, Laura went from St. Louis. And just how big of a testament that is that when you invest in yourself, you know, there's only one way to go from there and that's up. So super, super proud of you. We are in week 11 of the 90-day action plan. You guys, we've got like 10 to 11 days left. This is the last week for the VIP Phoenix contest. So anybody who's working to qualify for the VIP trip that I put together, it ends on Sunday, it ends on the night. So you've got like four and a half days left to just crush it and finish as strong as you started. But I really just want you to think about how you felt at Celebration. You know, what, how, what did you feel? or NYKO, what did you feel, you know, when Susan Sai was wrapping up that end of the event and Kathy Cooper was doing the call to the action and she was talking about, you know, I will step up and everybody enrolling at least one more a month, two more a month of what you were doing. And now we're coming into April quarter two, you know, we're at the very home stretch of it. And what are you willing to do? This is not the time to say, oh my gosh, I'm not where I thought I should be. I should just stop now. This is the time to put your foot to the, you know, pedal finish as strong as you started and no matter where you end up it's further along than where you started so let me know if you guys have any questions it's a rank advancement week for the team we're blitzing we're digging deep we're rank advancing others we are going to run with this free enrollment like nobody's business all week and i'm super super excited to celebrate all of you so with that being said the first girl I would love to introduce to the call, I was so excited to finally meet in person and it must be more than computer friends now. Last week in New Jersey is Roseanne. She is pushing towards manager. I mean, this girl is just such a lady boss and entrepreneur at heart, but she's going to teach us tonight about our Spotlight product. So are you there, Roseanne? Yes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so product spot, can you hear me? Can you hear me? But I can't hear you now. You sound good. Oh, I'm there talking. you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Ista Fruits is the spot, product spotlight. Um, you can find it under the targeted solutions and healthy, uh, daily health section of your order forms. Um, it comes in a canister or also in sticks. Um, it contains antioxidants and phytonutrients for over... 30 of the premium fruits. Um, it has 25 calories per scoop 
and only one gram of sugar. Um, you can mix it in with water or you can put it in with a shake. Um, it also tastes good if you, you know, put it in uh, like a Greek yogurt to add a little flavor. Um, there's no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. Uh, my kids personally love it um, just by itself, or I could add it with some hydrate. Uh, makes a good dinner drink. Um, you can make ice pops. Um, and it's also, you could be used uh, with your bedtime belly buster if you mix it with uh, the, the Ice Away Pro and uh, Fiber Pro. And that's about it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I love the ice of fruits. And I know actually Rachel and Sean is typing this as I speak. Love the fruits and the greens together, which is super fun because then you just get this antioxidant bomb drink. So I also now want to introduce my sister. She's a two-star golden circle with the company well on her way to start 1000 and three-star. But as you know, we are a product-driven company. All of this starts with first loving the products and falling in love with the products. So Rach, will you hop out and share us a little bit about your product story and information? Yes, absolutely. And hi, welcome everyone. Um, so before Isogenix, I was one of those people that ate extraordinarily clean. I watched every single thing I put in my body. I ate organic, nearly paleo, um, have gluten intolerances and dairy intolerances. And it was just like, I was so restricted on what I could eat. And I was working out in the gym close to 15 hours a week as a health uh, or as a fitness instructor, and I just wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And then Lauren graciously shared Isogenics with me, and I'm telling you guys, within weeks, I dropped 10 pounds, 9 inches. I was through the roof with energy. I was sleeping like a baby. I'm a psychologist by training, and I didn't think I was stressed, but stress just started to seriously roll off my back, and I was like, what the heck is in this stuff? Crack, because I hadn't felt that good in years. And now I truly eat more, work out less, and I have had better results. Most of you know I moved to Mexico a couple of months ago and seriously should be 50 pounds heavier. And I swear it's only because of Isogenics and Wednesday cleanse days that I've been able to live this awesome, balanced, yet healthy lifestyle and feel amazing doing it. So I believe everyone needs it. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And that's awesome that your chip and taco diet is not leading to a 50 pound weight gain. And the last girl tonight before our guest speaker takes it from here um, is a dear friend of mine and we've only gotten closer because of Isogenics, but she's a single mom. She's a part of Start 1000. She is a one star crystal executive, three star golden circle. She's a member of Start 1000, which makes her a six figure income earner of the ages between 18 and 35 with Isogenics and really just has a powerful, powerful story. So Kisa, you there girl? Yes. Hi guys. Happy Tuesday. Oh, happy taco Tuesday. You guys know it's like my favorite day. So, um, thanks for having me. Uh, so before Isogenics, uh, which was about three years ago, I'm coming up on my three year anniversary or Isoversary. Um, I was introduced to the products by Lauren, but I really did come in just for the products, but I was working a full-time job in an industry that I was not passionate about at all. Uh, I barely saw my daughter. I mean, as a single mom that splits time with her dad, uh, we had a minimal amount of time anyways. And then I felt like most of it, I was, you know, working or she was sleeping. Um, after I had a great product experience, I really kind of caught the vision and saw the opportunity. And I remember a pivotal point was when I was driving Reese to school and I saw all these other moms and dads kind of walking their kids to school with coffee cups and smiles on their faces. And I really realized how unhappy and unfulfilled I was. And so that became my why was really to be home with her, have that quality time and do something that I was really passionate about. So I made it kind of my mission to use all the pockets of my time to learn about isogenics, to share with other people. I went to my first event about two months or maybe a month and a half um, after I had enrolled. And that was a huge turning point for me as well. Um, a couple months in, I was able to go down to part-time at my job, and then after a lot of work and some, a lot of wall-kicking moments, uh, I was eventually able to put in my notice, my two weeks notice at my job. So I'm just super grateful um, for the opportunity that Isogenics presents to us and gives to us to you know, not only share and help other people be the best versions of themselves, but also you know, the personal development that we 
have in order to grow ourselves and really ultimately spend as much time as possible with our families. So. You're not muted. Hi, you are Thank you, Tisa. So one of my favorite, favorite things about Isagenics, you guys, is that we embody this one team philosophy and that we really do want to help each other. And we have this abundance mindset as a company, as a culture, and that, you know, we're only going to become this, you know, largest health and wellness company if we work together and lock arms. And so not only are we willing to help each other because Rebecca's on another organization and just openly and graciously wanting to pour into us tonight, but that's how we became friends. You know, I remember just kind of seeing her on the start page and seeing her tagged and stuff. And I was like, who is this gorgeous girl? And I felt like I wanted to get to know her. And then we actually spent time together in Vegas, like two years ago, almost um, at a leadership training that David Wood had done and really became friends. And at the time she was pregnant and nobody knew. And I was thinking like, oh my gosh, this girl's a boss. How is she running stairs with us in Vegas? And you know, she was in her first trimester and she's traveling and just investing in her business. And has just been so, so inspiring um, since then to me. And we've just been able to kind of collaborate and help each other um, through, our, through our businesses and through our journey. So just for all of you so that you know, Rebecca comes from 13 years of real estate. I mean, she was the VP of sales for a publicly traded company. She had a multiple six figure um, income before Isagenics, but she wasn't passionate about it. You know, she was in this job, but she found it kind of difficult to make time for her family or start a family. And it just really wasn't fulfilling her. When she was prepping for her wedding, she was introduced to Isagenics. She fell in love with the products and as a result, shared with others and really kind of caught the vision. So within one year, she had replaced her income with real estate and with the VP of sales in order to build Isagenics full time. She's now a four star crystal executive, four star golden circle. So she's created uh, four executives. She cycles at the four star level that makes her part of start 1000, you know, a six figure income earner between the ages of 18 and 35. She's home with her husband, her 13 month old baby, and is just really, really excited about sharing this with others and really designing the life that she's created. So Rebecca, welcome to the call. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Oh my goodness. Thank you for having me. I'm honored and humbled. I'm so excited. This is like one of my favorite topics. Yay. So we were messaging and just kind of, you know, what are the things she's passionate about or what are the things that, you know, I thought maybe this team could really benefit from. And before we kind of get into that, I would love Rebecca for you to really just kind of share your story, your journey. I mean, I know I kind of covered the details in the bio, but um, let them know like what, what it was like when you got introduced to it, anything that, you know, really um, aided in your growth or your momentum or how you took off so fast or whatever that may be. We'd love to hear your story. Okay, and I'll try to keep this short because I like to talk. <laughs> and so, um, you know, my story really starts probably about seven years ago. I um, was dating a great, wonderful young man um, who got diagnosed with stage four cancer while we were dating. And, um, and at that time, I was in a job that was crazy. And I remember like trying to go back and forth between, you know, chemo and work and just really like feeling so stuck that I did not have flexibility at all. And that I was missing those moments. And he actually, he ended up passing away. Um, and when I got into the job that I was in before um, ISA, you know, I felt like, okay, on paper, I'd made it. Like I was dating a wonderful guy or well, engaged to a wonderful guy who I'm now married to. And I had this, you know, this multiple six figure income and this really impressive title. But I kept saying like, why am I not happy? Like, why am I not happy? And I was working like a crazy person. And, and you know, in that type of work culture where a badge of honor is like pulling an all nighter or like I, I didn't take lunch because... I never took lunch because I was working all, long, all day long. And, and that's not something we should celebrate, but it's like, let me just grind it out. And that's an awesome thing. And it wasn't. And my health was being affected. And, um, you know, I had massive anxiety. I mean, I'd wake up every day. Actually, I went to the ER at 31 thinking I was having a heart attack. And so I knew I needed to make a change. But actually, your sister's story is just like mine. Like, I wasn't eating gluten. I wasn't eating dairy. I cut out all processed foods. I was eating organic. And despite all of that, couldn't lose the last 10 pounds, couldn't feel good, and was always sick. So it started out by me just falling in love with the products. And day five, I went, oh my gosh, I have spent the last 10 years and tens of thousands of dollars and appointments with, you know, every holistic health practitioner out there to feel the way I feel. And at the time, I had no interest in the business. But when I felt so good, I just felt obligated to share. And partly because I'm just so passionate about health. In fact, I found I was a lot more passionate about health. But I was about 
arguing with people about their interest rates, their rate locks, their closing dates, and the grain in their, their cabinets or the grain in their, va their granite. So, you know, I just couldn't stop talking about it. And I kind of accidentally started to get people started, even though I said, I don't have time for the business. You know, and I, and I want to just tell people, you don't need to know how it works to be able to do this. In fact, sometimes, you know, as the saying is, it's better to be ignorance on fire than knowledge on ice. Um, but I basically, again, I fell in love with the products. I figured out that I had earned like $2,500 accidentally sharing without understanding how it worked and said, you know what, I need to get to an event. Like, like there's something here and I really want to know more. Um, and I was looking for a way out of corporate America because my husband and I were talking about family planning and I was thinking, okay, I can't, I can't be out fourth quarter on maternity leave, but I also don't want to be pregnant during fourth quarter because the stress and the all nighters. I'm like, I am planning my family around the fiscal you know, quarters of a company that does not plan around me. And that was a wake up call. So I went to an ICU. So here's a hint, get to an event. I went to an ICU. My mind was blown not just about income because i kind of thought like i was like well financially i'm pretty set but i saw people like living their passion and that was not something i was doing so that kind of was the first the first big aha moment for me and then i started to really build intentionally and again i just want to say to people that like i was too busy to build and that's of course what we're going to be talking about tonight is operating in you know your, those pockets and and really at high level um high level activities but I was too busy, but I made the time because I saw what was possible and I worked my fanny off um, because I wanted that freedom. And, um, you know, I'll tell you, and, and I'm not trying to be a downer here, but my husband is actually a cancer survivor also. I, if there's like a pheromone that people with cancer have, like I'm attracted to it. Um, but I didn't want to miss those moments with him. And, you know, this last December, he had a surgery that ended up being a lot more serious than we thought. Um, and he was in the hospital two weeks and I was able to entirely step back, no calls, like very almost, you know, returning a few messages here and there, but that was it. And really for almost an entire month, just focus on my family and my income didn't stop. I didn't have to ask a boss for time off. I didn't have to stress about anything other than like him. And that is the biggest gift. And I realized I kind of got refired in that moment because I realized that, you know, this is amazing that I'm experiencing this, but I'm so much more fired up to bless other people with that security because everybody needs that because we life happens and we just don't know when it's going to happen and everybody needs the time freedom and the financial freedom to have that safety net so that's kind of my story so awesome i love it and i didn't know that about your husband or the other guy um i will also just chime in briefly there's a girl that i was on president's quest with and her daughter was just diagnosed with leukemia um and she trained at super saturday atlanta and from the stage was talking exactly what you just said about how important it is to have this financial wall around your family and that security and you kind of never know and 12 hours later i was at the er with her daughter and i've been telling her story to so many people that are like i don't have time to do this i'm like you need to make the time to do this because there's no other safety net so i didn't know that about you but i'm so glad you just shared that and reinforced that so Rebecca is super excited tonight to kind of chat with us about IPAs. And for those of you that are like, what's an IPA in our network marketing Latin lingo, it's an income producing activity. And so I'm just kind of going to let you roll with this for a little bit. And if there's something I feel like I want to probe or ask a little bit deeper on, but really just kind of share with people on not only how to build this in the pockets of their time or how to manage their time, but what are the things that they really should be doing that are going to propel their business forward and not just keep them busy. Absolutely. And I, I will break it down. Like I said, I love this because when I, when I saw this bigger picture, you know, I went to the ICU and, and I came back and I was like, okay, I think I see what's possible. And then I went to celebration and that was the, that was the real game changer. And I actually gave notice at my job when I got back from celebration, but I gave him four months. I was like, I have four months. I better do this. Um, so I didn't think I had time. I was working 60 plus hours a week and I had to look at my schedule and say like, where can I fit it in? And and I want to tell everyone out there, like, we recognize everyone is busy. In fact, you want people that are busy because they're the ones that need it more than anyone, right? They need that time freedom. And even though they may have income, they may not have that flexibility. So um, really, the first thing I did is I looked at my schedule and I'm like, all right, where am I listening to the radio? Where am I watching TV? Like, where am I working out? What am I doing that I can incorporate isogenic? So the first thing it was, it was um, in my car. 
I mean, I was on the road on average two hours plus a day, sometimes three. So that was a lot of time that, you know, initially it was, it was spending, educating myself. So podcast training, team calls, three-way calls, like whatever I could be doing, you know, I had a headset in. And then um, it was also saying, you know what, Dancing with the Stars and The Bachelor is not really going to pay me. Um, it's not going to change my life. So maybe those aren't that important. I like to say that none of us are rich enough to be watching Netflix <laughs> during the day or really in any time. Or even at the gym, if I was you know, working out and I couldn't talk, obviously I'm probably not going to be on a three-way call at the gym, but um, I'd have the headset in and I would, again, be listening to a podcast. Um, so we'll talk about like where training fits in with IPAs, but it was just really looking through my calendar and also saying, you know, what, maybe it's not that important for me to go like, like I used to photograph weddings. That was my passion actually, until I discovered isogenics. I'm like, you know, maybe photographing a wedding for 12 hours and I might get paid 2,500 isn't the best use of my time. Cause that's income I'm going to earn once. But I, if I could spend eight or 12 hours doing something that is going to pay me over and over that actually might be a better use of time. So getting very, very clear. And then secondly, having those hard conversations with spouses. Um, my husband, like we had just gotten married and like we were in our honeymoon phase and I would get home from work at seven and he'd get home even later because he was an engineer at the time. And, you know, I was on the phone and he was very frustrated. And I had to say, listen, like my time is like until 10 PM. And then from 10 to 11, we'll do whatever you want, even if it's watching TV. Um, but understanding that like my vision of working my rear off for, you know, six months or eight months is going to give me this flexibility later on and really having to paint that picture for him. And then also honor that time and show him that I was going to be working during that time and not slacking off or getting distracted. Um, and then making sure we had our date nights or whatever, you know, was needed, but really honoring that time so that we could get to our end goal. And I'll say that, you know, now that we're in this end goal, you know, I'll do a, a call or two after six, but for the most part now I work my business during business hours and I still have the flexibility to take my son like today to the zoo at three and music class at four. Um, but just getting really clear. So let's dive into it. So income producing activity, um, like Lauren said is, you know, something that's going to lead to like an enrollment or a rank advancement. I mean, that's typically it for you or someone on your team. And there are non income producing activities that are really fun and that are important. Like actually like this call tonight, but understanding how to differentiate between the two. And Kathy Coover says we need to spend about 80 to 90% of our time in the high producing income, high producing IPAs. And so let's talk about what those are. So for time management, if you're building this part time, I like to say if you can dedicate one, ideally two hours a day to income producing activities, you're really going to change your business. Um, if you're full time, more like three to four is ideal. Um, don't feel like you're going to do eight hours a day. That's probably not realistic and you'll get burnt out. Um, sometimes the fun stuff can replenish you, but the IPAs are what actually create a sustainable business. Um, and then also leveraging your time. I am all about time leverage. So when you can do what I call on the job training, so let's say a training call, like this is a much better leverage for Lauren or for me to do a, a training about IPAs versus jumping on the phone with one person at a time and talking for an hour about IPAs, right? Because that leverages our time. Or if you're gonna do a back office training, like leverage your time by getting as many people onto a call or a training or a Zoom or a webinar as possible. So kind of through, through what I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about what I call five by five by fives. And you can use any division of this. You could say three by three by threes or 10 by 10 by tens, whatever you wanna do. But we're gonna break it into three categories for IPAs. And one is to contact, which I like to call to bless. One is to follow up, which I like to call to empower, and one is to love, okay? So let's talk about contacts, so that initial contact when you're reaching out, and this might be part of building your list. So one is when you're scheduling appointments with someone. I love using text message because that's how people communicate these days, right, is by text. And also, the computer can be a slippery slope. It's really easy to get distracted and talk a little bit about social media and how to not slide down that slippery slope. But I'll take my phone, and I don't even have my phone now because I don't want to get distracted by it, but I'll take my phone into the nursery with my son, and while he's playing, I will go through like the A's or the B's or the C's in my contact list, and I'll go through and I'll just literally go one person to the next, and I'll look at their contact, and if they have that little microphone for an iPhone, I will leave a voice memo. And it'll say something like this. 
oh my gosh, you've been on my mind. It's been however long since we've, we've, um, you know, touched base. It's been, you know, two years, it's been two months, whatever. I've been thinking about you. I want to catch up. I want to hear a little about what you're already doing. I've got some exciting stuff to share too. When can you chat? Something like that. I love voice because they can hear your excitement. They can hear your, your tone and it's a lot harder to ignore a voice memo. And um, the reason I do that with text versus Facebook memos is it's easier to not get distracted where Facebook memos, you've got the Facebooks, you know, the, the message is like coming up, coming up. And um, if they don't have voice memo ability, I have a template that I copy and paste from my notepad. So if you do this for 30 minutes, you can probably get out 30 messages and you'll probably schedule anywhere from five to 10 appointments right away. And then the rest of the people will kind of trickle in. So that's a, a tool I love to use. And it's great to do it on Monday because people are one, they're usually not feeling great. They're usually ex not excited about going to work. They're looking for any distraction. And if your social media is on point and you're the person they think about, about like health and positivity, Mondays are a great time to follow up when they're like, I probably should make a change. I probably should eat healthier. I probably should do whatever. So that's a great time to, to reach out or to follow up. Um, on, Facebook, on Facebook message as well, if you are do, following up by Facebook message or leaving a contact by Facebook message, maybe they're like an old high school friend and you don't have their contact info, um, again, use voice memo. And what I'll usually do which is similar is I'll like have my 20 people I want to contact and I'll go through and I'll leave them a super quick Facebook message like, Hey girl, or Hey friend, or Hey, whatever on the computer, like 20 of them. And then I'll go back and leave the voice memo with my phone. Okay. And then also contact from where you've networked intentionally. So maybe you've gone to meetup.com and you've gone to a couple meetups, like a Toastmasters, a, a networking event, like a BNI business networkers international, or something that's subject-based, like an exercise class where you connect with someone, or a parent group if you're a parent, or any type of interest-based group. Um, this could also be online, but pulling up after, making that, that happen. In fact, I'm just gonna share, because I have, like I'm a checklist girl, I'm probably nerdy, and if you guys wanna copy this, I'm happy to share it. Like I literally have a checklist, and so when I'm doing my IPA time, I'm like, okay, my checklist is, birthday memos, which we'll talk about. Um, it's going into my like local Kayla group. I love Kayla BBG workout. So like I'll go into my Kayla group and I'll do a little love or LinkedIn or Facebook or mommy groups or like I'm an IIN, you know, so there's all these different places I'll write down as my own personal kind of resources and I'll just create these checklists and I'll go in and I'll say, okay, today I'm going to spend 20 minutes in that group. Um, and I'm going to spend 20 minutes in that group and make sure I'm touching each group once or twice a week. So making sure you're intentional. Um, next is sharing in person. That's, that is an IPA, your 30 second story. But I would say when you're planning your one or two hours of IPAs a day, um, don't just be like, oh, I'm gonna be out in the park and talk to people. Be, I, I like to make that like my reach out with intention and follow up, okay? Um, reaching out on Facebook based on posts that are already related to health or wealth or time, um, that doesn't mean scrolling the feed. That means that you've seen something earlier and you made a note to yourself to follow up with that person and that you're reaching out. Hey, I saw your post, made me think of whatever. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna kind of create the message based upon what's appropriate, but making that time to follow up. Um, sharing a resource. So that's an article or video. And it could be like, hey, I saw, I saw you posted about this. Oh my gosh, this video, I think that you would love it. It really resonates with you know, your message or however you're sharing it. Or maybe it's a friend that's, like complaining and you saw the start magazine and you're like, you know what? My friend that's complaining has a really similar story, a four story to this person. And you reach out and you're like, Hey, this person really reminded me of you. I think you'd love this story. Here's my magazine. Um, I only have a couple though. When can I get it back? Or when can I you know, pick it up from you? Always make sure you have one of those. Whenever you see someone that you are getting a service done by your hairdresser, your masseuse, nail salon, spray tanner, whatever it is, but make sure you have some type of resource to leave with a person that you are going to be hanging out with for an hour or two, or just be flipping through it. If you're at the salon, have your lookbook or have that start magazine with you. Um, and then webinars. Um, like tomorrow night I'm having a, I'm doing two events. I'm doing an online like wellness Wednesday. That's uh, like a 30 minute presentation where I talk for 15 minutes on the product side. And then I bring on some testimonials. So it's reaching out to people I know and say, hey, like, you know, 
I know that you're always talking about like yoga. I thought that you'd really be interested in this. Um, would love to know your thoughts or reaching out to someone and saying, Hey, um, you know, I, I know that you've asked about what I do. I wanted to give you a little preview. Would love to know your thoughts about the format of this and would love to get your feedback. So there's so many different ways to reach out. Um, but basically that contact is an invitation to something. And then of course, inviting to an event. And that can be to like a lunch party, that can be to a super Saturday, that can even be inviting them to, to your product support page if you allow prospects. So a couple of different templates I like is, hey girl, I love your positivity, I love the way you show up on Facebook, I love how you celebrate others, you would just love the culture of the group I'm part of. It's based on the health and wellness products that I use, which I know you absolutely would love because everybody would, everybody needs cellular cleansing, but I just wanted to see if you'd like to be added because I feel like you could add such value to the group with your positive messages. Always add, ask to be at or ask to add them. And then if they say, yeah, absolutely. I always say, you know, tell me a little bit about like your health and fitness goals and also just what you're obsessed with. Cause I want to give you a really warm welcome and then also tag a couple people I know you'd love. So I like to say that um, if you're inviting them to an event, um, I, if it's from a product standpoint or a business standpoint, there's a few different ways to do it. But one way I love for business is I love telling someone, listen, I really value you. Um, I value your business acumen. I value your kind of your judgment. And, you know, I'm either thinking about starting a business or I'm thinking about really starting to invest more of my time or I'm thinking about taking it to the next level, whatever is true in your situation. And I would really love if you would come and take a look at this first hour and give me your feedback. What, what should I love? What should I be digging more into? Or maybe what should I research more um, before I share? So instead of just saying, hey, are you interested? Sometimes extending that help me is a really great way to get them to, to take a look. And of course, they're going to be like, yes, this is, what you should, this is what you should be excited about. Maybe this is what you should look into. But our events are so good that anybody's going to get excited. So hopefully that's all helpful. Um, something about social media. Social media is such a time suck. And I know that I think for a lot of people, we feel like we're working hours a day because we're plugged into maybe podcast or we are, um, we're like scrolling social media or we're like loving in our group. Like I'm working in my business hours a day, but nothing's happening. I would encourage you to be really intentional about your social media. And here's a few ways you can do it. So one is schedule out your social media ahead of time. Um, ideally in a week. And, and Lauren, I have a great kind of breakdown and training. If you remind me to share later, I'll send it to you and you can share it with your team. But, but I actually, let me see if I've got mine in front of me. I don't. So I go through on Sunday and I'll spend 30 minutes to an hour and I will literally block out my social media and I'll say, all right, where am I going to put my power posts? Like Sunday nights are good. Monday mornings are good. Maybe a Wednesday. Where am I going to put like drip in product posts so that I know I've got like three lifestyle product posts or, or business celebration posts, but you don't want to like do four in a row. So I like make sure I'm staggering them. And then where am I just going to be authentically me? And I'm a calendar girl. So I'll look through and I'm like, okay, I've got, you know, this with my son on Wednesday afternoon, hump day, noon. I'm going to post that because I want those other moms that are working to be like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. She gets to be with her son. Um, so I make sure I'm really intentional about it. The reality is, is half the stuff I plan, I don't post because something comes up where I want to post in the moment, but just knowing I have something prepared is really, really nice. Um, and it also keeps me from like saying, oh my gosh, I need to get on social media and post something, but like, what should I post? So I don't waste that time because I'm in the mode when I'm planning. Um, secondly is I don't just let myself scroll my feed. Um, I will do it when I'm like walking to my car and I have five minutes or like I'll give myself five minutes while I'm like drinking my shake. And I'll scroll my feed and I'll do a little love, love. But what I'll usually do is I will scroll through and I'll like, see if I see someone that is not in my team or not in ISA and they're talking about like, has anyone tried a whole 30 or, or they're talking about something or like, oh my gosh, I want to reach out to them. I'll just screenshot it. And then during my IPA time, I'll go through my screenshots and I'll be like, okay, reach out to her, reach out to her, reach out to her. And that way I'm being really intentional about it. Um, but set those boundaries, set those social media times, give yourself like 15 minutes to scroll or like 15 minutes to love. Um, I also, this has really helped me a not feel like I'm in a state of panic or urgency and B be more present for my family is I have turned off the notifications for all my apps, except for my texts. I turned off the apps from, or the notifications from my email and my Facebook messenger because on Facebook in general, 
because I noticed that like when that little messenger popped up, I'd be like, oh, cortisol, something's happening. I need to respond. Ah. And that was keeping me from really digging in and doing what I call power sessions where a session for an hour, or it was making me constantly making me, it was enticing me to constantly check my phone when I was with my family. And that's not the type of mom or wife I want to be. So I Turn off to respond to Facebook messages a couple of times per day. If it's urgent, shoot me a text because I'll respond to the text or I will go to the message if it's a message. So it also trains my team that I have kind of business hours and that's okay. And I know that we want to support our team at all hours. But at the same time, like, if we're really saying that's hard to honor our time and I promise you, you're going to be more productive and you're going to get more done if you're actually setting those time blocks for yourself. Okay. So that's kind of about contacts. That's what I call to love. That's to love on people or to bless people. Um, and I actually have a board and I, I say like, who am I going to bless with isogenics today? And that's where I keep my list. And if somebody comes over to my house and I say, see that, like, I think it's just better than saying like prospects. No, it's like, who am I going to bless? This is a gift, health and wealth. Okay, quick hydration break. Mm. All right, yep, exactly. I end my hydro flask, but it's like flat water sparkling. Okay, next is follow up. And I like to say to empower, because this is someone I ideally had some type of conversation about isogenics, or at least I've made some type of connection. And now I've, I'm, I've already like sent the blessing their way. Now I'm gonna empower them to make a decision for them. So a couple of concepts here is one is that every time you follow up, it shouldn't be, hey, have you decided if you're going to start isogenics? It should always be about building value. It should always be about um, building to the next exposure. So a few concepts here I want to give. So one is follow up is about saying, is about doing what you say you're going to do. So people respect a person that does what they say they're going to do. And I think we're all guilty of like getting excited, like I'm going to follow up with you and then we forget. So I would encourage everyone that, um, if you have a call with someone like, you know, a 45 minute call plan an extra 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the call that you can like send them the resource you're going to send them or welcome them into the group or do whatever those things so that while they're in that excitement state, you can follow up right away. Okay. Cause if we wait three or four days, like, come on, life happens, the car breaks down, they get like, they owe more taxes. Something always happens. It's going to change their mind. Um, concept two is one reason to follow up is always to set up the next follow up until they're ready to get started. So keep making a reason to follow up until they're ready to make a decision. Concept three is most people take four to six exposures. In fact, they say 80% of people take between five and 12 before they're ready to make a decision. So don't get, don't get upset or don't get um, disappointed or like lose excitement if they take a few. Susan Sly took like 23, okay? That's amazing. Now, yes, people will join you sometimes that are like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? I want to do it. That will absolutely happen, but it doesn't always happen and it doesn't usually happen. So if your goal is to educate someone and to really understand their needs and provide them a solution, that that's going to build the relationship, that's going to build the trust, and that's really what's important, okay? And then last is getting the exposures as close together. So if you connect with someone on a Monday when they're excited, Make sure that you are like introducing them to that first tool, that group, whatever the webinar right away. And then following up right after the closer together, the better. It's just like we say, it's easier to build fast, right? With business versus like enroll someone like every other month and then, you know, wait for the reset. No, like do this quickly. You have that momentum. So a couple of steps I want to give everyone for following up um, is when you follow up, here's a little template is say like, I hope you enjoyed blank. That could be the magazine, that could be the video, that could be, I hope you're enjoying a Facebook group, I hope you enjoyed the launch party or the Super Saturday, whatever it is. Would it be okay if I follow up with you on blank date? Okay, so set a date for follow-up. And then use the if I, would you? So that might be like, hey, like if I'm able to get you a seat at this event, would you be able to make it? Or if I'm able to drop off and want this magazine, would you have time to read it? Or if I'm able to answer any other questions you have, are you ready to get started? So use if I would you. And then I always like to, when I'm following up, say like, what did you like best? You know, about, again, the resource, the group, the event, whatever it was. 
um, always focus on that positive so that they're telling you what you like, what they like. You're not trying to convince them. And then be prepared with objections and understand that objections are totally okay. Um, you're going to get questions and objections. Don't freak out or freeze up about them. An objection is actually a sign of interest because if they weren't objecting, they just say no thanks, right? The fact that they're telling you, well, I think it's a little bit too much money or I don't know if I can stick to it or, you know, I, I, like, to, I like to chew. Like all of those things are actually a sign of interest and it's probably a sign that they actually have a lack of belief in themselves or a lack in the belief that the product, products could work. And again, what does that mean? It means that you need some more exposure for them. A um, couple of ways I like to follow up. So one is say, hey, you looked at that tool. I loved it. I, I want to introduce you to my mentor or my friend or my whatever. I wouldn't use upline. That's a terminology that I think most people don't really like if they're not in kind of in the business. Um, so a three-way message on Facebook is great. I have found that my team really utilizes those as a warm kind of um, handoff before doing a three-way call. Because the thing with like a three-way text is there just somebody's just another number on the end. So if you know, you've got Lauren as a leader and she's incredible and she's knowledgeable and she's successful, like she's everything that you want to introduce someone to. So if you do a three-way message with her where they can go on and Facebook stalk her, like she does a great job about curating her brand. So she's going to be able to go on and, um, you know, on that message, like leave a voice memo that she's so excited. They get to hear her voice. They get to go to her Facebook. They get to say, oh my gosh, this girl like knows her stuff. She's positive. Like, yeah, I want to talk to her. So I love using Facebook messages as a way when I'm following up to move someone to the next exposure. And also if it's not a good time with them, for them, if they're saying, listen, like stuff's crazy right now. Like I'm sick, my kid's sick. Well, that's, that's definitely a reason to, to follow up. Say, listen, like you need this so much, but I'll follow up in four or five days. Or maybe they're like, you know what? I'm on vacation or I'm leaving on vacation or, you know, I need to wait for payday. I mean, ideally you've built value where a lot of those over objections can be overcome, but, um, but find out what that date is. So they say after vacation, say, okay, absolutely. What day do you get back? So if they say, well, I get back, you know, Friday the 6th, say, okay, well, I'll follow up on Sunday the, the 8th because I know you're going to need to unpack. Um, but put it in your calendar and then follow up when you say you will. And if you forget to follow up, a template that you can use is saying something like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for dropping the ball or I didn't want to drop the ball. I just want to, wanted to let you know I didn't forget about you. Is this a good time to chat? So if you apologize, people are typically going to be a little bit more warm and receptive to chatting. Um, but follow-up is not just about asking, hey, have you decided to get started? Follow-up is about loving on them and again, empowering them. Um, so a couple other tools I just wanted to give you about follow-up is if you're on the phone with someone, you, you're in that follow-up process and there's no more objections, don't wait for them to say, okay, I want to get started. Most people won't, right? Say, listen, you know, you just got done answering all their questions. You just spelled out like how, what a shake day is, what a cleanse day is. You just figure out what the best pack is. Say, listen, I've got the time right now to get you started. If you're ready, let's do it. Okay. Most people are going to say, okay. Or if they're not, they're going to give you an objection, which is good because you want to get those objections out of the way and overcome them. Um, if they're deciding between packs, a little tool that I learned last night that I think is genius is while you're on the phone, send them either through text or Facebook messenger, send them the old 30 day schedule for the president's pack and say, okay, listen, I want to walk you through the packs and say, here's the president pack schedule and always present that First, this is the best pack, it's got the best retention, or well, maybe, maybe not say retention. It's got the best success. Um, it's just the absolute best one to start with. And then walk them through what they're gonna do each day. And then say, okay, well, and if you're not doing the presence pack, then like you'll get this if they're on a pace setter or total health and longevity. And then if they're doing a custom 30 day, well, okay, it's this, but you're not gonna get this, you're not gonna get this, you're not gonna get this. That's a great way to show them the value of the presence pack. Um, one other thing I heard today from, from one of my executives, now, I'm working on reformulating this because it's not quite my language, but maybe it's yours or you can tweak it to fit yours. He is phenomenal about like enrolling every time he gets on the phone. And so he shared this with me. He says, listen, how long have you been working to achieve your goals? Five months, five years, five days, whatever. How much money have you spent? And he gets the answer. And he's like, listen, you're a smart person. So he compliments them. He's like, you're kind of what you, he was, you, you got to where you're at right now, meaning where they need to improve because you've been procrastinating on changing some habits, or you just haven't found the right system to give you the health that you're looking for. 
There's absolutely no risk here and there's a money back guarantee. So let's stop that cycle of procrastination and let's change your life and your health. And then silence. And then he waits for them to say, okay, yeah, let's do this. Or to give an objection that he can educate and overcome. Okay. And then the last is to love. So to love is all about spreading love and love and pos love and pos love and pos <laughs> being the person you want to be friends with. So I love leaving voice memos. So instead of posting on someone's timeline, send them a voice memo on Facebook, like as a message. And it could be something like, hey, Lauren, happy birthday. I hope this is the best day ever. Oh my gosh, what are you excited about this year? What do you have planned? What are you gonna change? What is, what's gonna make this the best year ever? So one, make it a voice memo, but secondly, ask them something that creates a conversation that they gotta get back to you because that's also a contact. And then secondly, send out handwritten cards to your team. I mean, use ice the pool, send those texts. Like that is phenomenal for retention. I promise you, some people are gonna come for the products and stay. Some people will come because they make money. Some people are gonna come for the community. But that ISA Pulse is such a valuable resource. So make sure you're spending a few minutes in it, if not every day, at least like Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And then go back to where you last left off. I have templates in my phone that's for when they enter the ISA Body Challenge, when they do the Healthy Mind and Body, when they're halfway to rank advancing. And Lauren, if you want to reach out, I, I can remind me and I will send you my templates. Um, but just show up for people. I think that's the biggest thing is even if someone never starts and does isogenics with you, you want to be that person that is so positive that they want to refer friends to you. Okay. And then really quickly, let's just chat. I know we're, we're getting your time, but um, about what is not an IPA, but is still an important part of your business. Trainings, right? These are important because you're going to learn great things, but don't just listen to trainings all day long. Put them into practice. Okay. Use these things. I know I'm going over a lot, but even if you just start by like, like what John Maxwell sh showed us at a leadership is take one thing out of this to apply right away in your business. The first month, take one thing that you're going to change that you're doing now that maybe is not working. And then take one thing that you're going to teach someone else. We like to call that act and do that for a month. And that until that becomes a habit. And then you can take one thing the next month. Don't try to overhaul everything because then you'll just like, it's, a, it's paralysis by analysis. Okay. Next is coaching with leaders. Super important. Coaching with team partners, changing your auto ship, like don't want to lose that BV, make sure you're on your 28 days, cleaning your office, make sure that, you know, you have a good workspace, but don't get ready to get ready. Like don't every day be like, oh, let me just tinker with this. Um, use the products, be a product of the product. I mean, I, that is like the most important thing. I will tell you when you're not using your products consistently, you're probably not meditating. You're not doing your affirmations. You're not doing your IPAs. It's all linked together. Um, visiting with Crossline, super fun. It's great to collaborate, but make sure you're spending more time in your business, bringing in new people than just visiting. And then of course, read and listen to motivational material. But again, make sure that you're still in your business. Do those other things like while you're in your car um, and you don't have a call scheduled or while you're doing housework. <laughs> and then lastly, I just wanted to, to share something that, um, I know Lauren, you asked about leaders and I'll get back to that, but I just wanted to share a be do have. I think we all have a tendency to say like, this is what I want to have, you know, a seven figure residual income. I want to have two houses. I want to have like financial freedom. These are all these things. And then we say, and when we have them, this is what we're going to do. We're going to you know, be more generous. We're going to be this, we're going to be that. And then this is what, how I want to be. So when I have those things and I'm able to do all these things, this is how I'm going to be. And it's probably things like more abundant, more generous, more relaxed, more impactful right? I want everyone to flip that. Those qualities that you're going to be when you are a seven figure earner and those habits you're going to have when you're a seven figure earner start to be those now. And you'll find it easier to do the things that you need to do to have what you need to have or what you want to have. Okay. So instead of have, do, be, be, do, have. And then just lastly, really quickly on leaders. Um, so I, First of all, don't prejudge anyone. And I think that Laura Stevens is so great about talking about like really building belief into everyone. And she uses the color codes. And I love that. Um, I will say like one of my executives is on the call. My executives are from the most different backgrounds. None of them came in being like, well, one of them was a stranger, but Amanda Vorderstrasse was on this call. I mean, I have known her since middle school. I mean, her husband is best friends with my little brother. I never thought she'd business built. She just came in to do with the system. And she was my first executive. 
And then my second one was Mackenzie Arbel um, or Blanchard. You may have heard of her. She just hit start uh, 1000. I met her as a stranger. She jumped in for the business, not the products. That's not the norm. And then my last one was on products 18 months. They enrolled like four people. I went to the launch party for them. They went executive in, in well, in, in, in like 45 days. It's crazy. I mean, they went executive and the wife's now crystal director. Like, I never, I mean, who knows like when someone's going to build, but the point is, is don't prejudge. And also something I always asked, um, when I was in management and we're not managing people, right. We're, we're helping lead and co-collaborating with people, but I always ask people, how do you want to be managed? And so now I say, how do you want to be led? Do you want like Amanda Vorderstrasse? She's on, we have a, a call every Monday morning and we are on 15 to 20 minutes. We go through the goals for the week. We talk about what she's, what her, her goals are, what she's plugging into, how I can support her. And she likes that consistency. And she's great about having her schedule. McKinsey is like all over the place. And sometimes we talk five times in the week and sometimes we don't talk for two weeks. So, you know, that's just how she is. And then Dave, my other executive, like he's crazy busy too. And we might jump on a call for 30 minutes and it might be every other week, or it might be that we have like something scheduled. It's just all over the map. He never has used me for a three-way call. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to make that about me. He's doing something right. And I'll just say, listen, like you don't need me. You're doing amazing things. But if I can add some value and help you like grow bigger, better, faster, I definitely want to do that. But listen, like you do what you want to do and you let me know how I can serve you. So I like to use the platinum rule. Don't treat others as they want to be, or as you want to be treated, treat others as they want to be treated and realize you're going to be matching people with different energy levels, different abilities, you know, different goals. Um, so just meet them where they're at and run with them. Don't pull them. And then just understand that the biggest thing you can do is just being supportive of people. Understand people are sometimes going to take a step back from the business. And if you've had that conversation of like, Hey, when things get hard, do you want me to push you? Do you want me to leave you alone? Like, how do you want to be dealt with when things are hard, when you have your wall kicking moments and then, and then just be consistent with what you promise them. Because sometimes it's not about pushing and sometimes it is. It just depends on the person. So I think that's everything I had like to cover. I don't know if there's anything else you want me to chat about. You are awesome. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see the chat. I'm like been typing away like mad as fast as I can get everything on there. And my Facebook messenger and our team page is just going bananas with all of the excitement and goodness and golden nuggets that you have dropped. So number one, thank you so, so, so much for your time. It's so valuable. I will make sure you this recording because your team, even though they get you all the time, we all have on days and off days. And I don't know what to get rid of this to, but you are having an on day and I want the world to see this. Thank you. Um, I may have been an e shot at five o'clock, but huh? I said I might have had an e shot at five o'clock, but hey, maybe you had three. I don't care. That was good. Thank um, you. <laughs> but um, you guys, I'm gonna unmute and just if you can, you know, just say you know love and thank you to Rebecca. I mean, she does not have to be doing this for us, and she's you know kind of put her hubby in little boy aside to be able to be here with all of us. And then I messaged you privately just about some stuff. So I'm just going to mute awesome. so we can give her some warm love and thank you because this was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. That was great. Amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. My honor. And, and Lauren, um, I will get all that stuff over to you so you can share it with your team and I'll be sharing this with my team as well. Awesome. Thank you. And for those of you that don't know, Rebecca and I are doing a super Saturday together in San Francisco, July, June 3rd. Yes. June 3rd. So I know Kisa is going to bring a team up there. My sister's coming. If you guys have anybody in the San Francisco Bay Area, Jason Liu, Rebecca Cafiero, and myself are going to do that Saturday on June 3rd. So thank you so much, sweetheart. That was awesome. Thank you guys all. Roseanne, Kisa, Rachel, thank you for sharing your story. We'll see you next week. Love you guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.